Yes, there is a resurrection of the dead. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 8. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, God Almighty, descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' word. John 20, verses 3 through 8. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple John, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple John outrun Peter, and came to the tomb first. And he, John, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he, John, did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and went into the tomb. And he, Peter, saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his, Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple John, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he, John, saw and believed. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3-6a to For I deliver to you, fellow believers, first of all, that which I also received through the Holy Spirit, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, the Holy Bible, and specifically the Gospel of Jesus Christ, and that he, Jesus, was buried, and that he, Jesus, rose alive again the third day, i.e. Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and subsequent ascension, according to the Scriptures, the Holy Bible, and specifically the Gospel of Jesus Christ, and that he, Jesus, was seen alive by Cephas, i.e. Peter, then by the twelve Jesus' disciples. After that, he, Jesus, was seen alive by over five hundred brethren, i.e. fellow believers, at once. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12-19 through 19. Now if Christ is preached, i.e. the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he, Jesus, has been raised alive from the dead, how do some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is empty, and your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ is also empty. Yes, and we, fellow believers, are found false witnesses of God, God Almighty because we, fellow believers, have testified of God, that he, God Almighty, raised up Christ alive, whom he, God Almighty, did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ is futile. You, fellow believers, are still in your sins. Then also those fa- fellow believers who have fallen asleep in Christ, i.e. pre-tribulation dead believers, have perished. If in this life, in the natural body only, we, fellow believers, have hope in Christ. We, fellow believers, are, of all men, the most pitiable. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 to 23. But now Christ is risen alive from the dead, and has become the first fruits in the spiritual body of those pre-tribulation dead believers who have fallen asleep, i.e. died a physical death of the natural body. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all believers shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits in the spiritual body, afterward those pre tribulation dead believers who are Christ at his coming, the being caught up together. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 to 44, 49, 51 to 53. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, the natural body. It is raised in incorruption, the spiritual body. It is sown in dishonor, the natural body. It is raised in glory, the spiritual body. It is sown in weakness, the natural body. It is raised in power, the spiritual body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And as we, fellow believers, have borne the image of the man of dust, the natural body, we, fellow believers, shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, Jesus Christ, the spiritual body. 
Behold, I tell you, fellow believers, a mystery, something once known but now forgotten. We, fellow believers, shall not all sleep, i.e. die a physical death of the natural body. But we, fellow believers, shall all be changed, an instantaneous supernatural change into our spiritual bodies, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a millisecond, at the last blowing of the trumpet. For the trumpet of God Almighty will sound, and the dead, pre-tribulation dead believers, will be raised alive, incorruptible in their spiritual bodies. And we, pre-tribulation living believers, shall be changed, an instantaneous supernatural change into our spiritual bodies. For this corruptible, the natural body, must put on incorruption, the spiritual body, and this mortal, the natural body, must put on immortality, the spiritual body. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, i.e. uninformed brethren, fellow believers, concerning those pre-tribulation dead believers who have fallen asleep, i.e. died a physical death of the natural body, lest you sorrow as others, false teachers, false believers, and unbelievers, who have no hope of everlasting life. For if we, fellow believers, believe that Jesus died and rose alive again, i.e. Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and subsequent ascension, even so God, God Almighty, will bring with him Jesus, those who sleep in Jesus, i.e. pre-tribulation dead believers. For this we say to you, fellow believers, by the word of the Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we, pre-tribulation living believers, who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at the being caught up together, will by no means precede those pre-tribulation dead believers who are asleep, i.e. died a physical death of the natural body. For the Lord Jesus Christ himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, God Almighty. And the dead in Christ, pre-tribulation dead believers, will rise alive in their spiritual bodies first. Then we, pre-tribulation living believers, who are alive and remain, shall be instantaneously supernaturally changed into our spiritual bodies, and then caught up together with them, pre-tribulation dead believers, in the clouds far above the earth, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, and be taken into heaven by Jesus Christ himself. And thus we, pre-tribulation dead believers and pre-tribulation living believers, shall always be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, comfort one another, fellow believers, with these words. Luke 24, verses 44 and 45. Then he, Jesus, said to them, These are the words, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me. And he, Jesus, opened their spiritual understanding, that they, believers, might comprehend the scriptures, the Holy Bible, and specifically the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fellow believers, we know Jesus Christ abides within us through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Jesus Christ walks with us. The Holy Spirit teaches us. And most importantly, God Almighty watches over us, always. Remember, the being caught up together is imminent. May our Lord Jesus Christ find you going about the Father's business, which is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ as a good and faithful servant. Amen.